Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the highly anticipated Top Sports Talk brought to you by the prestigious Top Sports News. I am your host for the evening, Caleb Jenneret, and I am delighted to be joined by the renowned Isaac Deer as my co-host. Isaac, how are you doing today? Promises kept, promises delivered. We have dressed up for the first time in Top Sports Talk history. Uh, I'll leave it up to you to guess whether if I'm wearing shorts or dress pants, but that's for you to decide. But man, I am fired up. We have so many people to recognize, and it's going to be uh, a fulfilling episode. I think it's going to be one of the best episodes we have here. And uh, what what a way to end it off, though, uh, with uh, with you with the shades, me with the tie, adds up to uh, to the perfect combo. Kind of like a s'morio, by the way, which I had at Walmart. Like p- my mom picked them up at Walmart. I swung by her house the other day, but it's a s'mores oreo combo i recommend you try those out but it's not about the oreos today it's not about the oreos today it's about the people it's about the people we got to recognize the people not the oreos they've been recognized enough but yeah man how are you oh i'm great i'm feeling juiced for this incredible award show that we're about to put on it, it's going to be great but before we dive into the incredible event we would like to express our heartfelt gratitude to the sponsors a big thank you goes to invista credit union the family guidance center and the university of kansas health system st francis campus for their unwavering support and sponsoring top sports news throughout the year their commitments played a pivotal role in making this very show possible but today As you guys know, we gather here to celebrate the culmination of an eventful year in sports. From thrilling victories to heartwarming stories, the world of sports has given us memories that will be etched in our hearts forever as we embark on this remarkable journey. We invite you to immerse yourself in exhilaration and anticipation that surround us. So ladies and gentlemen, get ready to witness the grandeur of this prestigious award show. Tonight, we honor the exceptional athletes that has captivated the sports world. Let us embrace the magic of sports and celebrate the champions who have risen to the top. We're going to start it off, not with the awards we teased last week, with the spring, fall, winter, but we're going to start off with some newcomers. So, Isaac, I'll let you start with the fall male newcomer of the year. Before we get into it, I do want to mention we will have two winners for every award. Isaac will have one. I will have one. There's no first winner, second winner, any of that. There's just two winners. So. Yep getting right into it sure absolutely and let's start off with the fall male newcomer of the year kicking things off my selection is uh cj brown a sophomore from topeka high notably a forward on the soccer team um he's one of the most talented one of the most athletic soccer players in the county um as a freshman not this past season but the season before that he uh he proved that he was going to be one of the one of the better eyes to look at throughout throughout the years and um, he's emerged as a real up and coming star throughout his last couple of years. Um, really kicked off a great campaign to the sophomore year. Um, was really dominant. So the next two years are going to be fun to watch with uh, CJ Brown. So definitely keep your eyes on him as uh, one of the better players in the county. Yeah, and my fall new my fall male newcomer of the year is Jensen Shrickle from Hayden, sophomore, wide receiver, defensive back, and kicker. Shrickle had an amazing year in football this year. He had such an amazing connection as a wide receiver with his quarterback, Jet Walmeyer. Shrickle is a solid blocker up the field. He, he's good at DB, and he was just one of the big, best kickers in the county, and that can go without saying. I mean, the guy, the guy can kick. The guy can play. He's going to be a problem for years to come for the Wildcats. But getting into fall female newcomer of the year. Isaac, let's take it away again. Sure, absolutely. Um, my f- all female newcomer of the year is uh, Megan Mills from Seaman, a great volleyball player. And as a sophomore, I mean, she was just one of the best in the county. Um, first team, all United Kansas Conference selection. Uh, she was also named the Offensive Player of the Year in the conference just as a sophomore. Um, she also earned um, all class 5A state tournament recognition as well. 401 kills on the year, um, 20, 26.4% hitting efficiency. Uh, had a total of 40 blocks, 148 digs, 48 service aces. I mean, she was just all over the place. But Maggie Mills is going to have a, a sensational volleyball career the next couple of years, which I'm looking forward to following. But as a sophomore, she was pretty much pretty much had the perfect year. Um, so we'll, I'm excited to see what uh, Miss Mills has coming up forward. Another sophomore heading over to the tennis courts. We're going to talk about Ainsley Zuleta from Hayden. As a sophomore, she won this 4A state 
singles title for the second straight season, going 28 and two to help lead Hayden to the state team title. She was the city champ in number one singles, placed second to former 6A state champ Jill Harkin in the Centennial League meet, and also won a regional championship. So Ainsley, shout out to you. Yeah, and just as a sophomore, that's that's really incredible what she's done at Hayden so far. And that prestigious ten- tennis program itself, they're going to be also really good um, in the next coming years. But let's go to the winter sports. Um, let's start off with the, our way, winter male newcomer of the years. I'll go ahead and start because I'm selfish. Uh, we're going to go Washburn Rule here. We're going to go with Luke Lemke, the sophomore. Uh, he swam on Washburn Rule seventh place, 400 yard free relay in the class 6A state meet. Uh, Lemke was also part of Rule's uh, winning 400 relay and second place, 200 free relay in the city meet. He was also second in the Centennial League in the 200 individual medley, third in the 100 free, and also swam on Washburn Rules winning 400 free relay and runner up 200 medley relay. Luke Lemke making that big of an impact as a sophomore. It's almost a no brainer that he's got to be on this list. And another junior blue is my winner, Landon Cocker Munoz, the wrestler from Washburn Rural, only a freshman, won his first state championship and his first ever state championship tournament. Cocker Munoz kept a 37 and five freshman season with an 11, four decision over a late the East sophomore, Aiden Stewart in the 120 pound final. So look out for him in the coming years. Don't want to call anything now, but hopefully after his senior year, he's holding up that, that four timer, but Hey, we never know. Wrestling's so unpredictable, but if anyone's going to do it, Cocker Munoz has a good chance. But moving over to the females now. And Isaac, yep. since you're so selfish, I'll just keep, I'll just let you keep going first. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Um, winter female newcomer of the year. I'm going to go with the freshman myself. I'm going to go with Maddie Gregg from Seaman. Um, one of the best freshman years in the entire county this year. She was uh, also named the Shawnee County Newcomer of the Year. Not our top sports talk award winter newcomer of the year, but she uh, just keep adding them on. Averaged 13.4 points and 5.9 rebounds her freshman year. She shot 60.2% from the field. That is marvelous. Um, And she also shot 75% from the free throw line. It's just a baby. It's just a baby. 14 years old, 15 years old, whatever it is. And you're putting those kind of numbers. It's just ridiculous. Um, the freshman phenom, Maddie Gregg, is my personal winner, female newcomer of the year. And I'm excited to hear who is yours. Yeah, well, we're going to go with her teammate, Anna Becker. I mean, w- what are you going to do? She averaged 12 points, 3.7 assists, 4.6 rebounds, and 3.3 steals on this past season. And this Seaman team is just great. So, yes, they have two winners for two newcomers of the year. And watch out for these guys winning more awards next year because Becker is a TSN top 10 repeat pick and was named the UKC player of the year. Becker has taken the world by storm with her impressive defense and ability to go to the rim. So shout out to the Seaman girls basketball team for sweeping the winter female newcomers of the year, but we're going to move over to spring male newcomers of the year. Isaac, take yeah. it away. Just got done with spring sports last week. So let's, uh, let's get right to it while it's fresh in our head. Um, I'm going to go with the Shawnee Heights product, Deacon Pro- Deacon Pomeroy, excuse me, uh, sophomore catcher for Shawnee Heights. He's named to the all-conference first team for the second straight year. If you add that up, as a freshman, he was all-conference. As a sophomore, he's all-conference. Um, I've only heard great things about this kid, too. And from what I've heard from around Shawnee Heights is that he's really just straight up addicted to perfecting his craft. He's always wanting to become the best um, he's addicted to going to the cage and, and swinging off tees and, and, and getting all the reps he can. But uh, Deacon Pomeroy is just a stud. And his next two years, you never know what we're going to see. But um, I think the world will see his work pay off. And um, I won't be surprised if, if he takes the world by storm in the next couple of years because he's a great talent and he is, uh, he's a workhorse. So I think he'll, he'll definitely get uh, – I guess he deserves what – what his hard work will get him in the future. But yeah, Deacon Palmer is a stud. He's got to make my list. So he's my spring male newcomer of the year. And I'm curious to know who yours is, Caleb. Yeah, we're going to head over to the track and we're going to head over to Pico West where Alessio Batson 
uh, is going to be my male newcomer of the year, the sophomore from Topeka West. After advancing in the Class 5A state track and field championships as a freshman last year, Topeka West sophomore captured a 5A state championship in the triple jump at Wichita State Cessna Stadium. Batson took the event and lead on his first jump and went wire to wire for the title, jumping a best of 48 feet, 4.25 inches. Batson's rise in the track ranks through his first two years has been eye-opening, to say the least. So excited to see what he can do going forward. But... We got the females now in spring. I mean, it, it feels like we've been talking about these guys for – or these people for weeks now as it just ended, but let's keep going. we got some really good players to talk about. Absolutely, and we're going to go with the female side of things. Um, my spring female newcomer of the year is Kendra Cook, the sophomore slinger from Silver Lake. Um, got it done in the circle this year. I watched Silver Lake um, in Rossville, and that area could be quite a bit this year. And Kendra Cook – isn't just one of the best pitchers as a sophomore in the county. I think she's becoming one of the best in general. Um, she's proven over time that just her work, her work ethic's been great. Um, she's swinging it really well as well um, at the plate. Um, selected as a first teamer in the in, in the mid mid east league this year. She's an all first teamer there. Uh, she's twirled her fair share of no hitters, and honestly, along with with junior Avery Wendy. Uh, the other pitcher in the circle, they are one of the best one-two duos, I think, in the state in all classes, to be honest with you. I think that's remarkable knowing what we've seen from the sport of softball in the state this year. But I think uh, Kendra Cook has definitely earned that right as one of the best underclassmen in, in the entire state. But uh, Kendra Cook, Avery Windy, that Silver Lake team has a lot, a lot of those pieces coming back next year. So, um, But Kendra Cook has been nothing short but great this year. So uh, she's my spring female newcomer of the year. Um, not a huge surprise, I don't think, um, you know, if you follow softball in any way, shape, or form. But Caleb, who is your spring female newcomer of the year? Yeah, well, we're going to head over to the the pool where we're going to talk about the, the junior blues and Audrey App. And in her freshman season, she achieved impressive results in swimming. She secured top four finishes in the Class 6A state meet, earning third place in the 200-yard individual medley and fourth place in the 500 freestyle. Additionally, Audrey placed a crucial role in girls victories in the relays. She also dominated the city meet and Centennial League, earning multiple gold medals. Audrey's consistency and talent in shorter events were truly remarkable distances and heavy distance races all year round and just as a freshman i'm looking forward to see what can happen in the years to come but we got two awards left before we get to our big time season athlete of the year we got comeback player of the year isaac's gonna do male comeback player of the year i'm gonna do female comeback player of the year isaac i'll just let you take it away absolutely man um my male or I guess our male comeback athlete of the year, what we've selected here. Um, we're going to go with Lenny Narogi from Topeka West. You've heard his name uh, a lot uh, throughout our episodes from the fall all the way to the spring as a cross country stud and a track star as well. But, um, you know, Lenny Narogi, not too long ago, he, he broke his leg. Um, I think it was a year prior. I think he was playing club soccer right before the cross country season kicked off broke his leg um, the year after he won his first cross country city title, bringing Topeka West that same honor since the year 1993. Nirogi also won a regional title in cross country. Um, he set a school distance record in the one mile at the uh, Bob Kamen and Claudia Welch uh, Invitational in April. So not too long ago, um, you know, and the future Kansas Jayhawk has a bright future in front of him. He placed second in the two mile at the 5A state meet. And also had a fourth place finish in the uh, one mile at the 5A state meet. So what a story this guy is. He's been nothing short of great. He's always one. If he's not one, he's always right there. He's always two. Um, but he, in cross country and track distance, um, Lenny Narogi is going down as one of the greats to uh, to leave the city. Um, but yeah, Lenny Narogi is um, a, a true talent. And uh, I'm happy to see the way he rebounded and the way that uh, he fought through the adversity to um, you really lead Topeka West to some great things this year, um, whether it's in cross country or track, he's been, um, been a big part of their success. So yeah, congratulations to Lenny Dorogi. You are our male comeback athlete of the year, sir. Yes. And talk about a good story. I mean, it doesn't get much better than our female comeback athlete of the year, Alyssa Drogi from Hayden. 
She's battled through three knee injuries and won a battle against cancer, two ACL and meniscus injuries, as well as a diagnosis of non-Hodgkin's lymphoma back in 2021 was an uphill climb for the senior, to say the least. Drogi had to fight six months of chemo and get the good news late in 2021 that the cancer was in remission. Drogi is a true hero and a warrior. Her fight against the pain was extremely inspirational. She came out, she came back looking like one of the best pitchers in the county. She was one of the best in the circle in the county this spring and was straight up dominant. Her story will be remembered forever. Alyssa, shout out to you. You're the best. Uh, it's been an honor to cover you this year, and it's been great to see you rebound the way you have, for sure. Getting to our big-time awards. Not saying that our previous awards won't weren't big, but these are our f- season athletes of the year. We're going to have two for each. Well, we're going to have four for each season, two for male, two for spring. we got a lot to talk about. These are big-time athletes. We've talked about them a lot, but we got a little bit more to talk about them more now. So we're going to start with fall. We're going to switch it up a little bit. I'm going to go first. We're going to start it off with Trey Richardson. I mean, who else are you going to pick? The athlete from Highland Park is a 5'11", 175-pound senior, is a repeat TSN All-Shawnee County Top 22 selection and earned first-team All-Metal Art Conference recognition at receiver and was named Conference Offensive Player of the Year. Richardson rushed for 1,964 yards and 27 touchdowns on only 96 attempts and caught 40 passes for 1,079 yards and 15 touchdowns. He also had 868 return yards and passed for 144 yards and three more touchdowns the Hutchinson signee is bound for the world to know his name very very soon if they don't already the dude's a stud and i can't wait to see what he does in the future is that good eh, i think it's pretty good i think it's pretty good <laughs> awesome yeah uh that's trey richardson put up some insane numbers uh he was in god mode last fall but um, there are some great nominees on the list. And I think the one I'm going to select is Ty Weber linebacker from Washburn rule. If you know, you know, if you don't know, you better go ask somebody, uh, Ty Weber, Washburn rules, linebacker, six foot three, 230 pound inside linebacker, uh, Shawnee County's defensive player of the year for a second straight season after uh, helping lead junior, the junior blues to an eight and three record and to the third round of the six, a playoffs this year, he recorded 134 total tackles, 82 of them being solos. He had the hat on the ball, baby, 19 tackles for loss, forced three fumbles, recovered three fumbles. He had two sacks and he also had an INT, uh, the Washburn university signee is just bound for incredible things. He is, uh, otherworldly when it comes to uh defensive play um he's going to be he's going to be great uh wearing an ichabod uniform and i'm excited to see what the future holds for mr weber yeah 100 percent. moving over to our fall female athletes of the week or sorry of the year used to doing that weekly kind of thing lewis dieter is going to be my female athlete of the year the seaman golfer as a senior dieter finished seventh in the 5a state tournament after winning city and ukc individual titles and finishing second in the regional champ regional competition Dieter led Seaman to its first ever league title by 51 strokes into a regional team crown before earning her third state medal in as many high school golf seasons Dieter placed fifth individually in 5a as a freshman and a junior as well so she is no uh newcomer to success to say the least Lois Dieter is a stud absolutely and my Fall female athlete of the year is going to none other than Brooklyn Delay from Washburn Rural. Uh, what hasn't Brooklyn Delay done on the volleyball court? She's done everything. She's achieved so many different accolades nationally. She's well known. She's going to Kentucky uh, pretty shortly, I'm assuming. And yeah, she received all 6A state tournament recognition for the fourth straight year of this last year. Um, led Washburn Rural to a 45 and one record this past season the eighth 6A title in school history. Um, Brooklyn Delay played on rural teams that finished first, second, and third, and fourth at state. Just four years of straight-up dominance. Um, She finished the 2022 season with 457 kills on a 341 kill efficiency and went over the 2,000 kill mark um, for her career late in the season. Uh, Contributed with 21 block kills, 324 digs, and she had a 2.61 serve receive grade and 64 service aces on a 91% serving. And those are really, really good numbers. If you don't know 
Um, and I think she won the Kansas Gatorade Player of the Year back-to-back -back years as a junior and senior, being recognized as the best ball volleyball player in the state of Kansas. Um, but, you know, Brooklyn DeLay uh, is going down as one of the best, if not the best, volleyball player in Kansas State history. Not Shawnee County history, but Kansas State history. She's one of the best. Um, she's going to be great at Kentucky. I'm excited to see what she does over in the SEC, but um, yeah, she's been a blast to cover, just to say the least. She's been um, a superstar, and yeah, we'll we'll miss covering her for sure. Yeah, and moving over to winter, we're going to talk about another dominant athlete. You talk about Trey Richardson dominance in football. You got to stay in the same school for the dominance in basketball with Bo Aldridge. I mean, if you want to hear about Bo Aldridge, look at any episode we have from November to February, and you're going to hear everything you need to know about Bo Aldridge. Aldridge is tapped as the Shawnee County Player of the Year after leading Highland Park to a second straight state tournament berth while averaging 22 points, seven rebounds, and six assists. I am so, so excited to see what he does in the future. He's got the, – the potential is out of this world. I mean, it he can do anything he wants. He is going to be a stud wherever he ends up. Uh, Bo Aldridge – I mean, we just couldn't get enough of him this year. And he was probably on our fave five list every single week from the months I mentioned from like November to February. So shout out, Bo. You're great. Everyone knows you and they know you for a reason. Yeah. And the, then another thing that's out of this world besides his potential is his jumping ability. The dude can dunk over 10 cars if he wanted to. He's insane. Um, Google him, Google him, Google him. That's your homework after you watch this lovely episode. Just go Google Bo Aldridge and you will come away very thankful that I told you to go do that. But uh, my winner, uh, male athlete of the year, goes to Josh Hammonds from Washburn Rural, um, a sensational bowler. Uh, he capped his high school career with a fourth place individual finish at the 6A state tournament with a 725 series. That helped Washburn Rural to win the overall state team championship by a 135 pin margin over a very good Olathe Northwest bowling team. Uh, he's a returning 6A state placer. He finished second individually in the 6A regionals with a 717 series, bowled a 628 series in the Centennial League meet um, for the Centennial League champions, Washburn Rural. So, yeah, Josh Hammonds, um, one of the best to do it. He's been, I mean, consistent consistency he's been a model consistency with his bowling but yeah josh hammonds is just, is a stud overall and um he's a huge reason why washburn rural won that state title this year but yeah congrats to him for that um but yeah let's uh let's get over to the females caleb who you have yeah this was tough there's a lot of names to choose from on this list but i had to go with one of the most dominant uh athletes in Kansas history with Addison Broxerman from Washburn Rural on the wrestling team. She helped Washburn Rural win its third class 6A, 5A state championship in four seasons. The Fort Hayes state signee was the Shawnee County co-wrestler of the year. Addison set the state pin record and became the winningest wrestler in Kansas girls history. One of the best to ever have done it in Kansas state history left her mark. And I guarantee there'll be many other girls that want to grow up and do what Broxerman has done so not only has she been a great wrestler she's been a great role model as this girls wrestling sport continues to grow um she's just been a staple so shout out to her absolutely and i think i gotta go with another staple in kansas girls wrestling as well i'm gonna go with kendra hurl kendra hurla as my uh, winter female athlete of the year um she's the other shawnee county co-wrestler of the year you just mentioned addison broxman as one of the co-wrestlers of the year kendra hurla is the other um, this was a it was a it was a good solid pick for me I think for a winner of female athlete of the year. Uh, Herla has owned the four through one a yard over the last uh, three years. If she's not already, she's one of the most dominant champions uh, in Kansas high school women's wrestling history. Uh, she's running through accolades like it's nobody's business. She's already made her mark as one of the best. Uh, she has a chance to sweep state from her freshman year to senior year next year. She can win four state titles. Um, not to jinx, we're knocking on wood right now. This isn't any of that. But Kendra Herla, uh, complete stud. I'm picking her to win her division next year to win her fourth state championship. Uh, and that's not a prediction, my friend. That's a spoiler. But yeah, that's my uh, winner female athlete of the year. I think we had was, a pretty couple of good selections there. That was a bar. Yeah, that was a bar. Shout out, shout out to you on that one. We're moving over to spring, our last section 
of our awards, Spring Mail, we're going to start off with actually two people. So there's three winners of the Spring Mail Athlete of the Year. We couldn't separate the two. Ian and Miles Cusick from Topeka West on the tennis team, they won their second 5A state doubles state championship a few weeks ago. Not only are they amongst the best doubles teams in Shawnee County history, but the duo also made their mark by helping Topeka West win its first ever team state championship. Ian and Miles have had a strong mentality and obviously great chemistry over the years. I mean, this is just movie stuff. I mean, they're, they, they need a feature on them immediately. Actually, spoiler alert, I've done a feature on them. So just go check that out if you want to see a feature on them. But Ian <laughs> Miles Cusick, shout out to you guys. You guys have been great all year. You guys have been great throughout your careers. And it was great to see you guys win another one this year and win it as a team as well. I'd love that slight plug there. Yeah, go check out Caleb's story. If he hasn't mentioned it already, go check out his story on the Cusick Twins. Um, it's a good one. You got to go check it out. But uh, my spring fa- uh, spring male athlete of the year, it's got to go to Jake Muller from Hayden. Uh, Jake Muller won his fourth ever state track title of his career last weekend in Wichita. Muller won his second 300-meter hurdles championship at a time of 38.41 seconds. He also ran on Hayden's winning 4x1 and 4x4 relay teams. Hayden won the 4x1 in 42.65 seconds and the 4x4 in the 4A state meet of 3 minutes and 20 seconds, 0.99. I'm just going to throw that in there. I'm not good with numbers. So, But Jake Muller himself, sensational athletic career in every sport that he he's done, um, just the silent killer in basketball. He's, he's been crazy all over the place, but, uh, but the way he ended his track career is just incredible. Uh, just winning all that gold uh, to end things off was amazing. So he's my uh, spring male athlete of the year. Yeah. And then we're going to move over to spring female. Hold on one second. Oh, let me grab this for you. Go big red. Emerson Cope is my winner of the softball or sorry, spring female athlete of the year. Emerson Cope, she lives for Nebraska as one of the top softball players in Shawnee County history. For two straight years, she was named the Centennial League Player of the Year and has led Washburn Rural to two straight 6A state title appearances. Cope has became the single season and all-time home run leader also in Washburn Rural's history. Cope's prep career was a blast, and I'll be excited to continue to watch her at Big Red University, Nebraska. So shout out Emerson Cope. Uh, She can do she can hit both ways, and she is going to be repping the the crimson. Uh, is it? It's it's not white. It's crimson and cream, which yeah. is weird, but it's really white. But yeah, go go big red and go Emerson Cope. You you're you're the spring female athlete of the year for me. Absolutely, man. This was a great list, but yeah, for Caleb, the greatest university in the world gets Emerson Cope. I think he's pretty pleased with the way things have been out for him. Um, for my pick, my spring female athlete of the year i'm sticking with softball and i'm gonna go with the sophomore phenom herself grace proctor uh, from shawnee heights and after having a really eye-opening freshman year um on uh, on the diamond grace proctor had an even better sophomore year uh, for shawnee heights that nobody uh, and on that team or coach or anybody else will forget what kind of year grace proctor had uh she was named first team ukc as a pitcher this year uh she had a fair share of no hitters and helped Shawnee Heights defeat the number one seed Bishop Carroll in the first round of the 5A state tournament. They weren't supposed to win that. They were the eighth seed and knocked out the number one seed. And as a sophomore, you're the one, you're the one throwing it around and you get that finish. Um, that's going to leave an enormous amount of confidence uh, for you to pick up in the next couple of years. But Grace Proctor has been an absolute beast. And Shawnee Heights has been great. They've been a staple in 5A softball. So I'm excited to see what Proctor and the rest of the T-Birds can do. But Grace Proctor had a stellar year. Um, that's why I'm picking her to be my spring female athlete of the year. Yeah, and that's going to do it. That's all of our awards. Shout out to everybody that won an award. Um, And as the curtains draw to a close on this spectacular show, we would like to take a moment to express our deepest gratitude marks of culmination of a remarkable year for top sports talk and top sports news alike. And we are immensely thankful for each and every one of you who have tuned in, supported us and made this journey possible. The show has been an exciting new experiment for us as well as top sports news and your unwavering support has been the driving force behind us wanting to do this most weeks. I can't say every single week because we did have some holidays and we had some stuff going on, but we did this almost every week. And from the bottom of our hearts, we want to thank you for being 
part of this incredible adventure. Isaac, you got anything else before we bid farewell? Yeah, no, it's it's been one of the best working years of my life. Um, I want to thank Rick Peterson and Bill Griffin, um, the heads of TopSports.News. You've seen Rick all over the place. Bill is a big reason why we're able to do this. Um, but yeah, they those guys have been great for both of us. Um, you know, it's it's been, like I, I, I mentioned, it's been the best working year of my life, being able to do projects like this and to be able to give the athletes in this county the recognition that they deserve. I've met so many great parents and so many great athletes and, and business people alike um, in Topeka. Uh, my last year in Topeka, it's been um, amazing. And I think Caleb and I are both uh, both got some things lined up pretty soon that we can't wait to share with with everybody. But yeah, I can't thank topsports.news enough. And I can't thank uh, every single person, every single athlete that I've uh, spoken with in the past years. But man, everybody on this list is incredible. Um, the athlete nominations, even if you weren't nominated, you probably were. But um, yeah, it's been been a great couple of years working working with them and it's been great working with you this year man once a week uh since the fall we've uh we've become buddies man i i gotta say we've become buddies um but yeah nope it's it's been it's been the best and i can't wait to uh to see everybody thrive in the future and can't wait to see uh what what everything what everything's gonna fall in line for for us and for the athletes that we mentioned today it's uh the future is exciting for sure yeah i couldn't have asked for a better co-host uh, I, I could definitely say we got better every single week. If you go back and watch some of our football previews, it is a little rough. It is a little yeah. rough. Still getting the hang of all that. And we're still getting better. We're still getting better as time goes on. So thank you guys for tuning in. Thank you, Isaac, for bringing that energy every single week and continuing to cover Shawnee County sports in the best way possible. But make sure you guys watching continue to support top sports news throughout the summer and into next year. But with that, once again, we thank everyone for their continued support and hope to see you again soon.